I got one. I got one. <laughs> that was quick, son. That was quick. Not a giant fish, but a fun fish on that A-Rig. <laughs> the old umbrella rig right there. Look at that. That didn't take long. <laughs> Folks, today, look at that. We are at Bartlett Lake. And I'll tell you what, in the springtime, a lot of fun. We're in that uh, area where the fish kind of, they'll hit crawdads, things like that but they start kind of keen in on shad and bluegills and things, things to that nature just because it's that time of year where they make beds and they get up shallow and start moving up shallow. You can see what I'm throwing here. Little uh, umbrella rig works really good. I'm using the uh, Kitek baits and uh, they work really good for me. We'll explain this in a little bit. We'll go down the bank, we'll keep throwing. I've, that was my second cast of the day. That was a good sign. Second cast of the day. You never want to catch them on your first cast of the day. They say that's bad luck. So that was the second cast of the day. <laughs> I, I venture to, to, to say that we'll probably get quite a few fish that are, that are the male fish that are up shallow right now uh, with the water temperature being about 65 degrees, 64 degrees. They're all moving up, making nests and the water's kind of it's, I wouldn't say it's muddy, but it's real dingy. And so when I picked out these baits, this particular bait, I wanted something with blades, get me some flash going and a little vibration. See if we can't catch some of these fish down the bank here. You know, this time of year, one thing to always remember is uh, it's very important to put yourself in a better position to be able to catch fish in the seasons that we have Knowing where the fish are is very important. So this time of year, when we go into March, April, May, uh, these fish are gonna be shallow. There's no sense in going out there fishing 50, 60 foot of water. Get in shallow, these fish are moving up shallow. You wanna get in these backs of these bays. Uh, they'll be in six inches of water, as shallow as you can get. There's a lot of times, a lot of the pros will bring up their trolling motors, raise their motors, get in, you know, that, that foot of water and be thrown right up there in six inches of water. You gotta be real careful with that, but that's a lot of times where these fish might be. So, uh, <clears throat> good time to parallel banks, good time to fish all these flatty areas. We have a little bit of a cloud cover today, but it looks like it might burn off later. I'm throwing this on my Taipan swim bait rod and uh, you really need something like that to throw this rig on. It's a lot of fun. We're towards the tail end of where this, this rig really works good normally. So we'll throw it a little bit. You know, it's not something I throw a lot during the summer. It's usually a lot of this is during the, the winter months. If you're gonna throw something like this, it, it works pretty good too. Fall's good. That early, early spring. This is almost like a spinner bait is what I try to explain to people when they throw these things. It feels like you are throwing something really heavy out there and you normally are, but the thing that you could throw this thing out there and there's not really a wrong way to fish this. You could throw it out there and, and you could just reel it in, you know, real slow, just reel it in. Uh, a lot of times you can let it bump the bottom. A lot of guys will let it bump the bottom and, and kind of twitch that rod tip a little bit as they go. So it's not a hard bait to learn how to throw. Just the main thing is making sure that everything is right when you pull it out, you know, that when you get it all rigged up, you check it every time you cast it and make sure that you don't have any hooks fouled up or things like that. There he is. Oh, there's a better one. Letting it fall down a little bit. Got that fish. <laughs> Come on, son. That's a little bit better than that last one we just caught. That one be just a little better. <laughs> and I caught him where I had to. Right in the, <laughs> right in the side there. Got him good. Look at that. Huh? <laughs> Letting it drop a little bit. You know, a lot of times with these baits, just reeling them in is fun, but you know, sometimes when you, when you work them a little bit, 
I know I'm sitting in 24 foot of water. I'm up there shallow. He could be on that ledge that falls off. So you got to let your bait drop a little bit. As soon as I did that, I caught that fish. Now, <sighs> this rig's a lot of fun to throw. And sometimes I felt, I felt a bite in there, a cast before then. And I think that it might have, the fish might have grabbed one of the top ones. These are called dummy baits. And the reason why we call them that is because you're only allowed in the state of Arizona two hooks. So I put the hooks on the bottom. And what I've done is this has allowed me to uh, throw a little bit bigger bait. Because here's the deal. When the fish swims up and sees this whole flash going on and sees all these little minnows, they're going to want to go after something a little bit bigger, you know, the bigger prize. So you put your little bit bigger swim bait on and throw the little tiny ones up on your dummy baits. Now all these are are screw locks on top of here. You put the screw locks on there and then you just screw these little baits on and that's what holds those baits on without the hook. And then down here you throw like a quarter ounce weight on the bottom and that really helps a lot bring the weight the, the bottom down. So it kind of looks like these are chasing it or you know I, I even make them a little bit different color as you can see. This is a Tennessee shad color. Then we got a little bluegill color in there because of this time of year. And uh, you know, the bigger fish will go after the bigger bait or the, usually the fish will go after the bigger bait. You know, that's a little five inch. So you got your little three inch and then five inch. And that's what I'm throwing there. Now, this particular one has blades on it. You can throw it with blades, without blades, but I chose with blades. They make them both ways uh, because of the, a little bit muddier water. I wanted a little bit more flash, a little bit more vibration. I thought it would help me a little bit. So that's what we're throwing. On top of that, what, I, what I'm also doing is throwing this on a 15 pound test line. You want to go 15, 17, something like that. And uh, that's a good line to throw. I'm throwing it on my Taipan swim bait series rod and then uh, using the Johnny Morris Platinum Series bait cast reel. That swim bait rod is a little bit lengthier, allows you to, to uh, be able to work this bait really nice. Plus, it's got the backbone and it allows them to suck the bait in a little bit. You can see it's got a little bit of a tip on it. You know, just a little bit, not a whole lot, but just enough to where they can suck that bait in and you can, you can set the hook. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun to throw this, this rig. Uh, once you get used to it. A lot of guys don't like throwing it because it feels like a heavy anchor. They don't understand it. But if you take this bait out and throw it a little bit, you know, and get a little bit of confidence in it. The main thing is getting confidence in it and not throwing too heavy a weight on your umbrella rig. You know, you want to go with like a quarter ounce, three eighths max, but quarter ounce on each one of these, that gives you a good weight and uh, you'll be good to go with that. You know, for my tip of the week, one thing I think that's really important when you hit an area like this and you see these cuts like you see them, we're in a little bit steeper water. A lot of times what happens is when these bass get up and spawn, you'll have your, your males that come right up onto the edges. A lot of people forget about the middle and that's where this bait a lot of times may shine for you is getting down there where those females are sitting. So a lot of times after you fish the sides and the edges, even though this might be a little channel right in here, a little cut, always throw in the middle of them, always. Throw back there, throw in the middle and just crank it through the middle of this channel. And you might find out that that's where some of the bigger fish are kind of hanging out, waiting to move in, especially with small cuts like this. Because a lot of times your, your uh, little male bass, especially it depends on how well it's pressured, but there you go, there's one there, right in the middle. That's exactly what I'm talking about. And so you throw right in the middle of these cuts <laughs> and you catch a fish like this. And we threw to both sides and didn't get bit. But man, sometimes they're just hanging right out there. Now this is a male fish, but still, they'll hang right out there waiting to move up. Come on, buddy. Yeah, look at there. See, we threw right in the middle of that cut and that's exactly what I'm talking about for my tip of the week. Very important to hit those areas. Remember, the fish might spawn, they might get up shallow, the little fish might, or they may be back off in the middle of the channel, just depending on what's going on. So always throw in the middle. This ain't a very big cut, 
but it's very important to make sure you come down the middle of them. So you're going to make three casts. You're going to parallel that side, parallel the right side, parallel the left side, and then make sure you get one in the middle, and I promise you, you may just get bit just like we did. Got him. There's one right there. Swimming out with it. <laughs> you little Texas rig bass. Come on, son. Oh man, and he ate it. Let me tell you. Oh. <laughs> Come on, son. Man, he he is fighting now. Look at that fish. Come on, son, you're done. That's one of the better ones today, too. A Texas rig bass, and he swallowed it. That is the benefit of these new baits that, that they have out today, is them doing that. I'm gonna have to get my little pliers out and get him loose. That's a good fish, folks. Those are the kind of fish right there. See you, buddy. <laughs> he caught it a little bit deep, but we got him. You know, any time the wind quits blowing, when you're throwing reaction baits like we were throwing, it might be time for you to go ahead and start heading to uh, Texas rigs, drop shots. When, it, when the lake starts laying flat, and that's what it did this afternoon, that's gonna be your best bet because reaction baits can be a lot of fun and then it's almost like a light switch went off and uh, the fish are still biting. But a lot of times you gotta slow down you, they're still in the same areas, and maybe just throw a little Texas rig. This little Texas rig here is just a little craw. All I'm using is a 3 8 ounce weight. I'm rigging it the old style with a little bead and a little 2 odd hook. This is that chigger, Crazy Legs Chigger Craw that I'm throwing here, made by Berkeley, in a green pumpkin. Pretty safe bet right there, okay? Caught a lot of fish on that bait. When you got a small and compact. Now remember, Bartlett is very well known for being a great jig in Texas rig lake. It always has been, uh, even drop shots. A lot of little fish in here, but still a lot of decent good fish. But it seems like they really like that Texas rig uh, in this lake. So I went for a fail safe and decided, hey, I'm gonna Texas rig. These fish are still up spawning. They're still up shallow. We just have to do something a little bit different to get them to eat, and that's what it took right there. I'm throwing this on 17 pound test line, medium heavy action rod, and uh, you know, just as simple as that. Small compact bait. And the reason for the bead is it sounds like a little craw down there. When you get this dirty water like this, that little glass bead hitting up against that, that weight, boy, they just eat that thing up, let me tell you. Fun fish. A lot of times, especially right now, we had a lot of water in the state in the last few weeks. And what happens is these lakes come up really fast. And when they come up really fast, sometimes the bass don't come up as fast with it. So if you're not seeing them up in the shallows and getting way up there close, a lot of times if you back off about 10 feet off the bank with your casts, you know, a lot of times they're sitting out there waiting to move in. So even though I caught, that last fish I caught was in about 10 foot of water eight foot of water um, and a lot of the fish we've been catching even though it's been close to the shoreline it's still off a ways so you know a lot of times you can take if you're not catching them way up on the bank like that take and make your cast five or six feet off the bank and work it back to you you may not want to parallel so close to the bank where you're right against the bank pull yourself off a little bit and work it a little bit off the bank because these fish have to adjust as well. This lake might have come up, you know, five feet in, a, in just a couple of days on this little lake. I don't know, but the thing is, is that I know that even with Roosevelt, when the lake rises really fast, a lot of times it takes a little bit of time for these fish to move up. They'll get up there, they'll do it pretty quickly, but sometimes you can catch them out here a little bit deeper. And something else to think about in the springtime, especially when these lakes come up, some of these fish might have already started making beds before the lake went up. And so those fish are gonna be sitting down there a little bit deeper. 
Look at this. Look at this right here. You know, there was three or four of those gray herrings that were up here. And uh, evidently they must come down at a certain time and do some feeding that tells you sometimes that they're shed. You might a lot of times look for those kind of birds like that actually in the water getting fish, you know, like shad or something along there. That's when this thing will really shine. <clears throat> a lot of times they'll tell you where the schools of shad are and things uh, when you see them feeding. When they're not feeding, eh, you know, a lot of times they're either taking their siesta or, you know, the fish just aren't ready yet. They haven't moved up. They sit around in areas where they think the fish will come up or where they know they usually feed or something. Because a lot of times I come through this area right here and they're there. They're just, there's a bunch of them right in this area. I think they come out here and they, uh, they feed when them shad move up. But uh, always look for those birds. It's very important. Uh, same thing with the grebes. You'll see those grebes. And that's another one to look for is those grebes. If you find those, those are those white birds that sit on top of the water and they have a little gray in them and they, they're, they're diving. And, and if you find those, a lot of times you can find where those shad are. So they'll tell you a lot of times without even using your fish finder where those shad are. And bass will feed on shad, go in there and catch some fish. Got that one. Got that one. He didn't get away from me that time. <laughs> yes, there we talking about, son. <laughs> Little Bartlett Lake bass. <laughs> he bit it and he didn't think I was gonna come back and get him. <laughs> I got you, son. Come on. <laughs> Oh, I got him good, too. He ain't going nowhere. That's a decent little fish now. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> I'll tell you what, what a great time on the show today, folks. We had Bartlett Lake getting out here in the spring, having a little bit of fun with these fish. There we go. That's a great tool, by the way. You can find that at Bass Pro Shops. That's a great tool. I love it. Look at that fish, huh? That's just gorgeous. Hey, I've had a great time on the show. Remember, all's not lost, man. When, you, when the wind lies down and the reaction bite goes, when you're out here in the morning having a great time, two things. If the wind's blowing, usually reaction's pretty good. If you have a good cloud cover like we did this morning, if the wind lays down, sometimes that reaction will stay going for a while. But when it shuts completely off, you get the sun that's getting high in the sky, man, there's nothing better than an old Texas rig. Give it a shot, you'll have a lot of fun and uh, catch a lot of fish on it as well. Thanks for joining us on the show. We'll see you next week. I'm Johnny Johnson. <laughs> now, see, that's what I'm talking about, folks. <laughs>